Hey, what's going on gamers? It appears that the game that I uploaded to itch.io and promoted in my last video was completely broken. Who could have thought, right? The main issue was that it wasn't possible to tell if you cleared the exit in the cave and the crash site was all wrong. I think from now on I need to do some serious testing before I make a video. So let's see how well I did this time. Did I make everything worse or did I make the game incredibly fun? As usual you can try the game for yourself by downloading the ROM from the links that you can find in the video's description. I made a discovery for myself that apparently making instruments in Famous Studio is actually really important. Ah, uh, only if I watched a Famous Studio tutorial before I made those songs for my game. The instruments can actually make your melody sound less ear piercing in the drum track sound more realistic and less fart. The most important tool here is the volume envelopes. You can, for instance, make your sounds fade away. Also with the pitch and arpeggio envelopes, you can create most unique sounds. So the lead instrument can be unique, not just some generic beeps and bloops of the square wave. Unfortunately, I haven't remade my music tracks, but I added new instruments to them. So hopefully the music in the game is less annoying now. The addition of the new instruments apparently made the music more complex. I noticed that the game started playing it incorrectly. It happened because the sprite update and the audio update happened one after another. Thanks to sprite update code being bloated and ugly, there was not enough CPU cycles to execute the audio update properly. Surprisingly, the problematic part was the piece of code that uh, used to hide the unused sprites. I used to go through all 64 sprites and try to hide them even though some of them were not even modified. And that was a pretty dumb idea. From now on, I started tracking how many sprites actually are modified during the frame. And if in the next frame I use less sprites, then I only hide those that were used before. So this fixed the issue. Like in my previous video, I'm still continuing my fight against annoying bugs in the game. This time I fixed invisible NPC bug. Sometimes while walking you could randomly bump into some invisible obstacle. Because of my crappy code, the game would simply thought that you bumped into some bunny or a dog that actually was screens away from the player. And now that's finally fixed. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning, the crash site map was completely incorrect. And that was because I forgot to switch back the tile set after exiting the alien base. So I had to fix that as well. Another embarrassing bug was related to main character's stamina. I believe this bug existed since the very first day I made the stamina recover. It's baffling to me how I didn't notice that it's impossible to regain your stamina if you don't press any buttons. Luckily it wasn't really hard to fix, so it should be fine now. I think nobody probably have noticed, but there was this issue with the player's HP not being updated after your sleep. So when the screen fades in, the HP remains the same. And you only notice when you go to the menu screen and see that the uh, HP is totally different from what was in the status bar. So that's also fixed now. As it happens, I made a fool of myself by not properly testing the spear. It actually still can get stuck in a wall and it's impossible to retrieve it, even though I said it's easier now. 
So I had to add some additional collision checking so the spear won't be able to fly far into an obstacle anymore. Once again the bug where the dogs stand beside you as if they are your pets or something is back. Or perhaps I haven't fixed it? Even though I think I did? Well, it definitely should be gone now. Although there is still issue that should be addressed in the future. When the hostile NPCs attack you, they not always face your direction, so that might seem weird and ugly. So that's my new priority after I publish this video. Then it was time to change the game over screen. But why, you might ask? Well, because it was created long before the intro cutscene and now it looked quite out of place. The main character looked way too childlike and very different from how he looked in the intro. So I just had to update this art. My first attempts wasn't that great and I think I managed to draw a junky Mario. <laughs> so the final attempt was the combination of this new art and the old one. I honestly like this one way more. Of course, it was impossible to transfer the exactly same image that I drew in the GIMP to the NES because of the color attribute limitations. Also because of these limitations, I no longer have a proper palette that I could use to draw the text in this screen. So I could no longer write it with proper light colors like white. Probably I could just modify the letter tiles, but I thought why not to display the text as sprites? This way I could do some animations with the letters. Well, in the end all I did is the game over text rising up. Maybe in the future I will do something more interesting than that. Since I decided to use sprites I no longer could place the text survived and days in one line. Because only survived alone is 8 characters. So you won't be able to see anything else after that. Also I don't display anything if you die the very first day. It's just the game over now. I didn't like the fact that the game over speech sample loops over and over. So I also composed and added this short tune after it. I don't think I will keep it there forever though. Next I tackled something that for you might seem like a minor cosmetic issue, but for me it was serious. If you would slow down the game when you are in the menu screen, you would notice constant screen jerking and flickering when you go through different menu options. That's because the NES PPU is ordered to draw more background tiles than it can actually handle. This constant flickering is ugly to look at and it also gives the vibes of a amateurish game developer. So I decided to fix that. So from now on I only draw a one row of menu element per frame. Let's say I need to draw a sub menu. So I draw it row by row. So you can actually see now how the menu elements are kind of unfolding now like it's some kind of an animation. Also now after leaving some menu section I clear it with the main menu tiles, not just redraw lazily the whole screen like I did before. Ok, so I improved the game over screen, the menu screen, how about the title screen? It surely needs some love as well. So I spent some time on the artwork and I think I managed to slightly improve it. As you see now the window has some yellow light seeping through it. And yeah, even though it looks like someone peed there, but it's just the light from the window bouncing off the snow. I also added some rocks at the bottom, so it won't be just plain white boring background. I tried to add some hatch shading. It looked quite nice in the GIMP. But unfortunately on the actual console, on the CRT TV, it doesn't look that hot. So I had to tone down the shading a bit. The last thing I added was a basic push start blinking animation. There are still many things that I want to do in this screen, but I think it will be enough for this release. You know what was still annoying? The slingshot. Now I actually made it 
accessible in the storage box. So you can try it out. Basically after I made that you could actually retrieve your unsuccessfully thrown spear, it seemed unfair that you can't do the same thing with the slingshot ammo. So I decided to fix that. I actually reused the same spear code here. Now you can launch a rock and if you miss your target you can pick it up again. What makes the slingshot superior to the spear is that you don't need to equip anything. The rock is ready to be shot after you pick it up. So now I have the spear and the slingshot. Both are nice weapons but they are kinda useless if you want to hunt bunnies. The thing is the bunnies are constantly trying to get away from you even if you stand miles away from them. Since also one of my viewers suggested this back in the day, I decided to improve the bunny AI so they would try to get away only if the player character is near them. At first I tried to make that every bunny has this large square around them and if the player crosses the square the bunnies would try to run away but for some reason it didn't work well. The next attempt was to create a large rectangle around the player's character itself and also to add a new state to every bunny. So basically now bunnies are chilling and moving randomly but as soon as this large rectangle that surrounds the player collides with a bunny the agitation state is turned on for this bunny and it will try to get away at increased speed. And that's all the changes for now. If you're interested in the further development of this NES game, then make sure you subscribe my channel. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.